Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome one more time to our Coffee Times to talk horror books. So today I'm here to basically try to push myself to read things that I should have already read. It's Coffee Time! So we all have that, you know, the year starts, you think about all the things you want to read, you keep adding stuff to your TBR pile, and the year ends and you realize there's many books you wanted to read that you haven't. And then, a couple years later, <laughs> we fast forward, a couple years later, you still have not read those things. Can you relate? <laughs> so, I wanted to make kind of a fixed TBR pile for the year, but I didn't want to include way too many books like I have done in the past. And I saw some people doing this video where they talked about 22 books that they want to read in 2022. And I thought 22 books doesn't sound like such a huge commitment. And maybe I can push myself to read some books from different types of categories that I wanted to read in the last couple of years or in the last year. And I still haven't read. So I thought, you know, I would put them in a separate book card and I could just get one or two out of the card every month to try to push me to read through those because we all know what happens. There's new releases, there's books that you buy, you know, just spontaneously and you start reading those and then you forget all about the books that you wanted to read. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put them in the cart <laughs> one step ahead just to try to get to those in 2022. First, let's talk about three middle grade horror books that I would like to read this year. The first one is Fright Watch, The Stitchers, Lorraine Lawrence, and this is the first book in the series. And we follow 13 year old Queen, and she has kind of like some weird neighbors that she calls the oldies. They seem to have been living in that street forever and also it seems that they are not getting older so what is wrong with them are they aliens are they vampires what's wrong with them we'll have to figure it out i've heard great things about this book and i picked it up just at the end of 2021 so i didn't have time to read it the second book is already out so i feel like i really need to get to this one then i have a 13th by kate ellis marshall i picked this one up because you know it was another middle grade horror that came out last year and it is about this girl that moves to a new town and she starts making some discoveries about her family heritage and also some supernatural things start to happen around her so I don't know I decided to pick it up because it was a cute cover and it was a middle grade horror that I had not read and the last middle grade that I'm hoping to read in 2022 is The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Noble. This is the story about a girl whose father disappeared. Her mother is too busy working and so she's being shipped into a boarding school. Um, and in this boarding school, she and her new friends make a discovery about a possible secret society in the school. So it sounds like middle grade dark academia kind of vibe. I've heard mixed reviews about this one so I don't know if I'm gonna love it or not but I want to give it a try. I believe it's also the first book in a series so I want to know if I like the first one before I commit on buying the next ones. Now let's move on to YA horror which I also want to read a little bit more of this year and the first one is Pitch Dark by Courtney Alameda. I picked this one up because it's also sci-fi and I want to read more sci-fi horror this year so this one you know beats two birds with one stone and basically follows a teenager that is sent on a mission um, which basically is going to decide if humanity is going to survive or not and yeah there's not much that i know about it but i know that it is a horror ya sci-fi um it is a standalone so it's going to be perfect because i don't want to commit to big sci-fi series the next one is perfectly preventable deaths by daedra sullivan and this follows twin sisters that are sent to a remote town in the mountains and there's something particular about this place and that is that girls have been going missing for years so i'm here like yes please <laughs> Um, this one, um, I believe when it came out a lot of people were talking about it, but I don't remember now if people loved it or hated it, but I picked it up, I think, one of the times that I went to England, and I still have not read it, and I feel like I have to. The next one is a YA thriller that came out last year, and that is Wicked Little Deeds by Kat Ellis. Since I read Harrow Lake and I really enjoyed it, I decided to pick up the new book by the author, and this follows a girl that has never believed the legends of her 
town. She always thought it was just made up until she witnessed an accident and started having these weird visions. That is all I know, but since I really enjoy, like I said, Horror Lake, I decided to pick up her next book. Not much I've heard about it, but I've heard that a couple of people prefer this one to Horror Lake. So since I really enjoyed Horror Lake, I'm expecting to also really enjoy this. And last but definitely not least, we have The Midnight Club by Christopher Pike. I really wanted to get to this one last year, but I was not able to, I didn't have the time. And since I know Mike Flanagan's Netflix limited series is coming at some point, I want to make sure that I have read this one first. Plus, I also love the concept of this book. We have the Rotterdam House, which is a place where teenagers with terminal illnesses are being sent to live their last days. And a group of friends, you know, a group of those teenagers that are there make a pact that the first one of them to die should come back as a ghost to let them know, you know, about the other world and stuff. So it just sounds so intriguing to me and I've been really meaning to read this one for the longest time and now that the Netflix series is coming out, I really have to get to it. Moving on with the adult books, I have here a mix between books that I've been meaning to read for a while and books that I bought last year and I didn't have the time to read them and I really want to. That is also the case of our next book, that is Served Cold. This is a compilation of short horror stories written by our beloved horror YouTube community and I'm really excited about this one. They did publish Local Hunts um, I believe in 2020 and I really enjoyed it so I really want to get to these stories. It's also a really chunky boy so I think I'm gonna maybe like read a couple of stories here and there through the year and then by the end of 2022 I hopefully would have finished it. Our next book is a book that has been talked about a lot in the horror YouTube community. A lot of people have been saying how gross and how disturbing this book was and I really need to know. <laughs> and that is Tender is the Flesh. In this book we have a society, a futuristic society, in which humans are unable to eat animals anymore because they get sick and so they have to start um, eating each other. Um, so basically they start raising humans just for the sole purpose of eating them. Um, so I'm expecting a lot of gross and intense moments depicting how they prepare humans, I guess, I guess for consumption. Um, so uh, I probably will make sure that I'm not eating or drinking or anything like that while I read this book. Uh, but I'm just so curious to know. It's the curiosity that killed the cat. <laughs> So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to stomach this one. Next is another book that I really wanted to read in 2021. I even put it on my TBR pile, but with the whole moving scenario and stress, I just didn't get to it. And that is A Diary of Blood uh, by S.D. Gibson. I've heard amazing things about this one. So many people love it. And it is kind of like a retelling of Dracula, I believe, but from the bride's perspectives. So I'm just so excited about this one. It's not even that long, but I just didn't have the time. So it definitely has to happen in 2020. Do. Same goes for Horseman by Christina Henry. I purchased this one last year. I really wanted to read it. You guys know I really enjoy Christina Henry's writing, especially when she combines your typical tales, fairy tales, with horrific imaginary as well as she does. So especially this one because it's based on the legend of Sleepy Hollow um, and how the town thought Sleepy Hollow was a legend told through generations that was not true until kids start to get murdered. So they're like, hmm, maybe, you know, the legend is actually true. So I'm just so excited to dive into this one and I really need to get to it also this year. Another book that I really want to read that came out last year and that I also didn't have the time to read is Only the Stains Remain by Ross Jeffrey. And this one follows two brothers that after the death of the mother are sent um, to their uncles so that their uncles can take care of them, but the uncles are abusive. So this one has a huge trigger warning for abuse, like uh, abuse to children, to kids. So just putting it out there because I know a lot of people do not like to read anything that has at all to do with abuse specifically to children so just putting it out there so this is a short novella and i really wanted to get to it last year but again i just didn't have the time next we have maggie's grave by david sothergren 
I have read a couple of his books, I really love them, and I still have not gotten to this one. I recently purchased it as well, and I really need to get to it. It is based on Scotland, in a really teeny tiny town that only has 47 residents left, in a grave, Maggie's grave. Apparently something happened to her, and I think she might be coming back for revenge. And a book by another author that I want to read a little bit more of is The Step Children by Stephanie Sparks. In this book, we follow Jamie. She starts to suspect that her stepfather um, is not who she believes he is. And I think when she starts digging deeper, she figures out that the stepfather um, has had families that have perished before. So I'm just really excited because I read The Babysitter and then I read a Scream Queen and I really enjoyed it. So I'm just, you know, really excited to read something else by her. And then there is two books that are kind of classics, like older uh, paperbacks that I really want to get to. One of them is Shrine by James Herbert. I really need to get to more of these older paperbacks that I own. And the other one is Jack Ketchum Off Season. I really want to get into more Jack Ketchum. I really want to read more disturbing stuff this year and let you guys know how disturbing it is. Then I have a couple of thrillers that I need to read. The first one is You Love Me by Carly Katniss. This is the third book on the You trilogy, I guess, so far. And yeah, this is another one that I just bought at the end of 2021 and I still have not read it, but I want to continue Joe's story before I binge the third season on Netflix. And the other thriller is The Whispering Man by Alex North. I've been meaning to pick up more books by Alex North, but then I was like, you still have not read any of his books. How do you know if you like this author or not? So, you know, then I was like, okay, let's read The Whispering Man in um, 2022 since I already own a copy and then I can decide if I want to pick his other thrillers. This one follows what the title basically says. There is this man that comes to your window that whispers to the children and probably lures them out to kill them, something like that. So I'm really excited because, you know, I've heard really good things about this. It was kind of hyped when it came out and I never got to read it. And yeah, before I purchase anything else from the author, I was like, let's just let's just read it in 2022 and see if I actually like this, um, you know, writing style. Then I have some miscellaneous books, <laughs> really. Um, so I went a little bit through my shelves and I tried to figure out which other books I could add to the list. And one of them was Wake of Vultures by Lila Bowen. I remember seeing somebody on YouTube talking about it and it sounded really interesting to me. This sounds kind of like a Western fantasy that has vampires in it. And I was like, that sounds great. <laughs> like a little bit something different from horror genre. It is more fantasy, but it does include vampires. So I was really excited. Also Western and vampires sounded amazing to me. I believe this is also a duology. So I have been holding off from purchasing the second book um, and see if I like the first one at all. So yeah, I think this one I need to get to in 2022 to try to figure out if I want to pick up the second book. And it's also been on my shelves for a couple years. Moving on, we have The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by B. Schwab, Victoria Schwab. I just like her books. Okay, I'm kind of like a fangirl. <laughs> so I tend to pick up everything she puts out. Um, and I picked this one up also last year and I still have not read it. I know it has kind of mixed reviews. Some people really loved it. Other people were really bored with it. So I don't know what I'm gonna fall, but it's definitely one that has me really intrigued. The next one, The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. All that I know about this book is that it is contemporary and it deals and explores grief. I know it has been adapted and before I watch the adaptation, I really want to read the book first. So since I do own it, I think I have to make it a priority in 2022. It's also a book that has been on my TBR before and I never read it. So I feel like now is the time. And last but not least, I decided to add another horror um, sci-fi to the list, this time an adult that I have heard amazing things about and that I had on my TBRs also before and I never got to it and now it's like I have to. And that is The Luminous Dead by Kathleen Starling. And this is about an expedition sent to kind of collect samples from minerals from a cave, I believe. And then when the people get there, there is something darker inside of that cave. So that is all I know. Um, I like to keep my synopsis sometimes a little bit vague um, because I'd like to be surprised by things I was not expecting. Uh, but this one has been, you know, hyped, has been loved, and I've had it on my TBR previously, like I said, and I really need to get to it. So 
hopefully pray for me I get to this one in 2022. All right, guys, so these are some of the books that I really want to read in 2022 that I decided to put already on my TBR card so that I push myself perhaps to get to it finally. <laughs> Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, which one would you recommend me to read first? And also let me know if there's any books that you've had in TBR piles before and you keep telling yourself year after year you're gonna get to them but then you never do <laughs> let's let's share our experiences down below so that we know we're not alone because I know we all do this we all have this issue please tell me it's not just me <laughs> anyway you guys I hope that you enjoyed the video please give it a big thumbs up for support and I hope to see you all as always in our next coffee time bye